Hi, my name is Dr. Eddie Ryan. I specialize in diabetes and pregnancy, and today we're going to talk about type 2 diabetes. Type 2 diabetes we typically thought of as a disease of older people, but we're seeing it much more in younger people at fertile age, so we're seeing people with type 2 diabetes who are becoming pregnant. Like type 1 diabetes, it's important that they come to their healthcare provider before conception because there are a number of things that need to be discussed, so let's talk about those. Firstly, there's the mother. Anyone with long-standing diabetes can have diabetes complications. That involves eye disease, kidney disease, nerve damage, blood vessel damage. We actually don't have good figures on what happens to these complications in type 2 diabetes in pregnancy, but we can extrapolate from the information we have in type 1 diabetes. There's about a 10 to 50% chance that the eyes will change during pregnancy, depending on where we start. There's very little damage, it's 10%. There's a lot of damage, it's a 50% chance that it will change. And so the eyes need to be watched during pregnancy. The kidneys behave in much the same way. There's about a 10 to 20% chance that there'll be a rise in blood pressure, leakage of protein in the urine, if there's no damage at the start, rising to about 40 to 60% chance of this occurring if there is a lot of leakage of protein at the start of the pregnancy. Nerve damage tends to hold the stain. But there is a risk of carpal tunnel syndrome where you get pain and tingling in the hands, particularly in the morning. Usually a stent is used and it gets better after the baby is born. Finally, in terms of the circulation, it tends to hold the same during pregnancy. Cholesterol and triglycerides rise during the pregnancy, but since the medicines for them can't be used in pregnancy, we normally don't follow them that carefully. In terms of the baby, there's two critical periods. The first is the f in the weeks six to eight, the first six to eight weeks of conception, that's when the baby is being formed. And if the blood sugars are high, there's a risk of a congenital malformation. And these are serious things. Defects in the heart, in the spine, in the kidneys. And they are preventable. If the blood sugars are controlled, there's no increased risk of these occurring. And by controlling blood sugars, we mean keeping the A1C under 7 in most labs that have a normal upper limit range of 6. After that first eight weeks, for the rest of the pregnancy, the hormones from the placenta raise the blood sugar. If that blood sugar goes into the baby, it's as if the baby converts the sugar into fat, so these babies get too big. It makes for a more difficult birth for the mom and for the baby. The baby also gets used to that blood sugar, so after birth it says, in withdrawal, it can get a low blood sugar. The baby can also get jaundice. I've never seen the baby born with diabetes if the mom had type 2 diabetes, but the baby will inherit the same genes as the mom, so in the long term will have a higher risk for diabetes. For in terms of medication, if the person is with type 2 diabetes has been on tablets to control their diabetes, most clinics would switch them to insulin. That's because during the pregnancy, the insulin requirements rise with these hormones coming from the baby blocking how insulin works, so if things are a bit borderline at the start, they won't hold and one will need insulin. There are some centers using more of the tablets during the pregnancy, but that's not the usual practice just yet. In terms of one tablet used, metformin, there are some studies su suggesting that if there's been a history of miscarriages or polycystic ovarian disease, that the metformin may be perfectly safe to keep going in the first trimester, and even for the whole pregnancy, and some centers do this. Other medications that have to be considered are cholesterol-lowering medications called the statins. If someone has type 2 diabetes, they may well have a high cholesterol and be on a statin. Statins are not recommended in pregnancy and should be stopped before conception. And likewise, controlling the blood pressure, ACE inhibitors or ARBs are frequently used, and again, they should be stopped before conception. And there are other blood pressure tablets that can be used. Finally, Prenatal vitamins are essential for any pregnant woman. And in diabetes, we normally recommend extra folic acid for the first trimester, five milligrams a day. And then it can be weaned down to the one milligram a day if needs be. After the baby is born, those hormones go away and the insulin requirements will come right back down and it may be possible to restart your oral medications or go back to your stable dose of insulin. I can't promise anyone a healthy baby but if the woman with type 2 diabetes has no major diabetes complications 
and controls the glucose before conception and during the pregnancy, then her chance of a healthy baby is the same as if she didn't have diabetes. And that's not bad.